Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity podcast, episode 90. So we are closing in on our 100th episode. We have been doing this for 90 weeks. Uh, one episode coming out every single Friday uh, for the last 90 weeks. So thank you to everyone for listening. Thank you to all our, um, our guests, uh, past, present and future. I will introduce the guests for today um, in a minute. Um, and I just want to say at the start, before we kick off, please do like, share, subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast on a platform that allows you to leave a review, you can also uh, leave a review for us, which would be very nice. Um, and if you want to join us in the Health Oddity Facebook group, just go on Facebook, search in groups, Health Oddity, and click to join, and we will let you in. Um, I'll just introduce the usual uh, hosts before I introduce the guests for this week. Uh, Mr. Peter Lant in Bath, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing very well. Just been out for a wander with a boy who's now asleep in his basket. So, yeah. For the guests, oh. the, boy, the boy is a spaniel. He's a dog. Yes. A dog. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I mentioned that last week. I haven't got any kids. It's like, if I, but if I did, they'd sleep in a basket. Because, you know... <laughs> You've got to, you've got to, you've got to become a well-rounded individual, haven't you? You've got to go through hard times in in the past to make you the person you are now. So you know, <laughs> there's that's for anyone who's got kids or hasn't, but is planning on having them. That's 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 not parental advice. Okay, good, good. And uh, that's Mr. why I haven't Paul... got any, by the way. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Paul Bass in uh, Putney in London, how are you doing? Not bad. Uh, did you have kids and they were taken off you, Peter? Or uh, no, no comment. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm allowed a dog, to be honest. Uh, okay. And well, I've got have... kids. That they're, they're alive. They're fine. You know, <laughs> social services aren't involved. Good, good, good. And today we are joined by two uh, fantastic guests. Uh, they are sisters. I was expecting them to be on one screen, but they are in, they're on two separate screens. They are both in France at the moment. Uh, one of them, Leonie, is in Châtel in France, in the, uh, in, the, in the Alps. And Kayla is on her way from um, somewhere to Paris. I think she, so she's on a train. She's frozen again at the moment, but she is wearing a, um, a, a face mask, as is still compulsory on French public transport. But whenever she talks, she will be lowering the face mask to give us uh, some, uh, some clear um, verbiage. If that's the word, um, but <laughs> but we've lost we've lost. You talk yourself she, into a corner there. <laughs> she may be uh, dipping in and out because she is on a train on her way to Paris. So uh, we will speak to uh, Kayla uh, in a bit. So uh, Leonie and Kayla are basically two absolutely fantastic uh, women who I know who both mm -hmm. uh, recently represented um, Team GB at the uh, Winter Olympics in Beijing. Uh, I know their father, uh, Trevor, as well. They're, they're fantastic. Their brother is also um, uh, a member of uh, Team GB. And they all do uh, something called mogul skiing, which um, if you've watched the Olympics or you've ever been skiing before, uh, or they'll, they'll explain what it is. I won't try and butcher it, what they do. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic sport. You may have seen them on the BBC. They, they featured... Uh, on the BBC Olympic coverage. They've also mm -hmm. been on Ski Sunday and now the pinnacle of their broadcasting career, they are on <laughs> Health Oddity with us. So uh, what we'll do, we'll start off with Leone because she is there and her Wi-Fi mm -hmm. is stable because she's in one place. Um, we will, Leone, do you want to tell us a little bit about, um, about yourself? Um, about, and Kayla can obviously jump in as well if, if, uh, if, uh, if her signal's okay. Um, about your background in elite sport. I mean, it obviously didn't start off as a background in elite mm -hmm. sport. It just started off as you you going on a ski holiday, I think, at one stage. Um, but kind of how you got into uh, skiing and how you ended up, uh, you know, being at the height of athletic competition at the Olympics uh, earlier this year. Uh, kick us off, Leone. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, I started skiing on basically going on holiday with my uh, brother and sister and my parents um, 
and then one year we came to Chatel for a skiing holiday for two weeks and my parents absolutely loved it um so my mom I turned around to my dad and said let's do a year uh, in the Alps uh, so we moved to Chatel for the year we got to learn French um skiing all winter uh, absolutely loved it and then my mom just said to my dad I'd I can't see why I would move move back to the UK. So we literally stayed um, in Chatel, still live there now. Um, and then what happened was we had a ski instructor called uh, Richard. Um, and he said to my parents, uh, your children are freestylers. And at the time we were just laughing because we weren't sure what that meant. But then um, I was on the chairlift with a uh, yeah, my sister and brother and parents, and I saw mogul skiers come down a bumper field, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to be like them. That's so cool. So then they just um, uh, booked us onto a ski club just across the road, um, and we started off there. Um, every uh, Wednesday afternoon, we had off to to go to ski club, and then Saturday and Sunday, um, and then started racing. So we joined the ski club. I was nine um Kayla joined a year later so pretty much the same age and then um kicked off a year later with like the kids like cups and racing um and then went on to Europa Cup um Junior Worlds and then uh in 2017 we got a call from uh at the time Dan Hunt was the director um saying we would love to to get a mogul squad going for GB uh, on the World Cup, um, and we just we just took it as a massive opportunity, and um, and yeah, just been on the World Cup tour since, and then uh, managed to qualify for the Olympics um, this year, which was amazing. Um, so my background compared to my brother and sister is slightly different, as in um, I had a lot of injuries that I had to to overcome. Um, I. I did my first ACL and MCL in 2014, so I was only 14 years old. Um, and then that broke again, not even a year later. Just for um, the listeners, just quickly, Leonie. So ACL is anterior cruciate ligament yeah. and MCL is medial cruciate. They're kind of ligaments that go across the knee to kind of give it stability. So um, what you do, uh, Leonie and Kayla, is, is very... Um, there's a lot of shock and instability, isn't there, going through the knees, going down those um, those slopes. You're literally twisting, you know, in, well, if you're not stable enough, you're, you're liable for, for injury like, like you've had, aren't you? You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I've had a lot of uh, dislocated my shoulder many times and, uh, and had to have surgery on that. Um, and then I, I broke my back. So I broke my L1 vertebrae in my back uh, I was lucky it was a stable fracture so I didn't need surgery but I had like a brace for three months um and then yeah I, uh, my recent injury was my collarbone I like displaced it quite bad so I had to have surgery on that mm. um so yeah on that side I've been a bit unfortunate but um yeah uh, you learn a lot from from your injuries so we can go on to that. Yeah, later. maybe we'll touch on that in a bit, Leone. That's great because I've had. There's. A, I'll just give her a shout out, Alison Young, who who was at the gym uh, last weekend doing the tactical strength challenge with us. Very very strong lady, but she specifically asked me. She said, "Oh, have you ever had anyone on who's overcome or come back from you know injury and serious injury?" Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that we had you on today, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, so that that's fantastic. We can touch mm -hmm. on that. Um, Kayla, for you, if you're uh, if your internet is, is stable, um, you've you've got away with with less injuries, have you? Yeah, a lot less than Leone. <laughs> I mean, I broke my. I think the worst I've got I had was breaking my collarbone twice. Uh, once when I was ten, a snowboarder went into me, uh, so it wasn't actually my fault. <laughs> and then. Um, uh, the second time was on what around I was doing the front flip and uh, I don't know I think I panicked in the air and the ski hit my collarbone oh okay mm -hmm. right so we can talk about but have you but you obviously you are you are you and Tom a year younger than um, Leonie are you or a year or two younger so is it two years Leonie younger and Tom are twins and oh I'm okay one year 
Yeah, oh, you're the, you're one year younger than the two. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So when you came to get into into skiing and go into the ski uh, the ski club and the lessons and things like that, like the only said, you kind of followed a year or so um, mm-hmm. later. Were you already seeing what they were doing and already inspired by by them, or was it just a natural thing that they were doing it so you were going to do it as well? Um, it's funny when people ask me this because. Uh when my parents said, oh, you should try out because your siblings are really enjoying it. Uh, I just had a meltdown and was crying because <laughs> I didn't want to go. I was so scared. Um, but then I did the tryout and I had re- like so much fun, even though I was like such a shy person and really anxious at the time. But um, yeah, I mean, it was the right decision because I'm still doing it now. So yeah. So if you all started at about nine year, you know, nine years of age ish, how old are you now? Just for the just for the listeners, just to know, Leone, how old are you? I'm um, I'm 24. So Kaylee, you're 22. Are you at the moment? 22 and 23 on 4th of June. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so you've basically been kind of skiing and 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 competing at a level um, for. What was that? 12, 13, 14 years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a uh, well since the age of 10, I would say. So pretty mm. much 14 mm. years. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. And um, just explain to me, one, one of you, just um, or to the listeners, what your actual event, event um, entails, because uh, some people, you know, some people might be listening who go skiing mm. or snowboarding and they kind of but a lot of people obviously don't do that. And some people will have seen you on the Olympics and some people won't. So, so, so what's the format for the event that you, what, what's the event called that you do, the, the formal name of it? And then what, what does it entail? Taylor, do you want to go on this or do you want me to do it? Um, I don't mind. I'll try to do as much as I can. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So we uh, compete in a discipline called mobile skiing. Um, it's basically a field of 250 metres long with um, two jumps and a bump line. So there's about four bumps before the first jump and then you have to land into a part like field of 40 odd bumps uh, and then there's a second jump and then land into like the finish area, which is like four bumps. Mm. Uh, we're judged on uh, speed, technique, and jumps. So it's 20% speed, 20% jumps, and 60% technique. Uh, the technique is judged on whether our knees split or not. If we do pivot skiing or carbon skiing, and um, our upper body basically has to stay as still as possible. Um, you basically got to make it look really easy when in your mind you're like, oh God. It does look like when you see anyone who's excellent at something, like you see a brilliant like golfer or a brilliant footballer or a brilliant swimmer or you girls going, you know, going down the, the, the slope. Um, it does look very easy and it looks kind of effortless and that's I suppose the, the skill of it and what you're trying to make it look but how how hard is what you do um because it we obviously have got no idea when we watch it because you make it look so um not effortless I know it's not effortless mm-hmm. but you make it look you make it look very kind of um uh elegant and very kind of smooth you know um, you yeah, go, I think, yeah, because I think Kayla, we might have lost yeah. Kayla for a second. Um, yeah, I think that's. Um, sorry, I just got a message. Nice. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the our goal is to look effortless, but the physical. I mean, the biggest thing in our um, in, in our sport is the physical impact, and there's a lot going through your joints in your body. Uh, maybe more than in in other sports um there's a lot of impact on your on your uh, heels there's a lot of athlete that has problems with their heels um because the impact's so big 
um, and then obviously your knees. Um, but the one that takes it the most is your back um, because you're constantly compressing your spine. Um, so it's really important to keep, to have a really strong core more than I would say anything else in your body. Like obviously your legs are probably as important, but um, it's really important to have that strong core um, mm. just to keep everything stable and, and um, yeah, strong. Cause you don't really want to be going down a mogul field with um, imbalances or, or something that's not quite hundred percent, mm. um, which, which um, obviously happened to me. So <laughs> So, so a lot of your injuries were um, were they a consequence of of a technique issue that went wrong at pace? Because obviously, when when you're going at pace, you, you don't want to make a mistake. So, um, was it just kind of mainly impact problems, or was it just imbalances and just com- constant kind of uh, wear and tear, and, and and eventually something just snapped? Um, so, my first knee was from landing too far back seat on a backflip. And I kind of couldn't stop. And so I I remember my upper body twisting, but my legs stayed still. So obviously that just snapped the ligaments. Um, But then it was really interesting when I, when I did my back, I worked with, um, with a back specialist that's actually based in Essex. Um, And he was saying that my, um, I need to get this right. My quadrus lumborus, is that it? Uh, the lower muscle of my back on the right side was not firing. So I was basically going down a mogul field with, um, he was explaining it like if I had a truck, um, it was like having on one side, no suspension. Um, And so therefore it explains that that's why my right side of my body has been taking all these injuries and hits is because I had that muscle that wasn't firing and wasn't working properly. So every time I was landing, I was landing more on my right side and it was taking more impact than my left side. Um, and then over time, obviously, I just, you know, my my right side can't support that because it hasn't got the the muscle there to to help. And then that's why I've been getting injured or that's one of the reasons anyway. Mm. So I think when when um, when Kayla was explaining the the kind of the course that you do and she said, oh, you go over these two jumps. I think if people haven't seen it, you're not just going over a jump, you know, you're kind of being scored on and you're, you know, you're doing like back somersaults and flips yeah. and things and landing. So it's, I mean, that I've seen you, what we'll try and do actually is maybe before this goes out or as it goes out, we'll put some videos out of you actually, mm-hmm. you know, of you actually doing, um, you know, these events, but I know you also, and I think Kayla mentioned that she broke the collarbone when the, when the ski kind of, hit it when you were doing because you kind of do practice down a sort of a a slope and then you jump and you practice these sort of aerial stuff and you land in water don't you sometimes is that is that right yeah so we train firstly on the trampoline and then like for new tricks and stuff and then we go onto a water water ramp so it's a ramp where you you're at the top on a platform with your skis on um helmet and then um wetsuit and then you go down this ramp on your skis and you jump in the air and you do your trick or your new trick and then you land in the water so it's just a bit less of an impact although it is still still quite an impact it's nicer to land in the water to try when you try these new tricks obviously instead of snow <laughs> okay. sounds a bit like dirty dancing when they're practicing the lifts doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I suppose that you know so i've got some drilling in the background which is very convenient but um I suppose that what, what you might find is that, that most people never put their bodies under enough of a stress that some of these issues that you've experienced would, 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 would emerge. I mean, so you mean not only are you training hard, you're training at an Olympic level, which means any imbalances must be very quickly kind of brought to the surface. So are you working with strength and conditioning coaches and you're working with physios constantly to make sure that those things aren't, don't rear their head yeah so we have a strength and conditioning coach um obviously all year and then we've got a physio on tour with us um throughout training uh and competition camps um 
uh, yeah, and then yeah, obviously we have our coach as well on the skiing side. So we've we've got that base all year round that you kind of have to have if you're gonna compete at a high level all year round. And do you also, Leonie? I know we we mentioned is Taylor actually there at the moment? I know she's muted, but I don't know if she's. Oh, she's there. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> she's there. she's having a nap on the train. There she is. No, she's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, and Kayla, with the with the training in the in the just if I ask you, Kayla, for a second, the, the training in the um in the water that you do when you're doing your your, your flips and stuff like that. What age were you when you started? Well, well, what age were you? I know you you. I presume that you don't from eight years old or nine years old go into doing these acrobatic flips and things or do you actually start doing that from very young on again she may have frozen damn these french trains <laughs> right okay leona you can you can answer the answer the question if that's um, okay how old were you when you started doing all the flips and things yeah actually you start um from nine. Oh, uh, okay wow yeah so you might not do the first year. I don't think I did a backflip on snow, but you already start doing backflips on the trampoline um, and on the water jump uh, at very early because mm. then, you know, you want to progress in your sports. You want to get that movement and um, that confidence early. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe within two years, I, I tried it on snow. And don't get me wrong, I was really scared, but... Um, we we our coach like took us to a, a north piste um, conditions um, and made a jump. So it was all powdery below, but I remember landing it and then falling to my back. But um, it was just it was terrifying. But then I was like, I want to do that again. <laughs> How did you find that, Kayla? Doing your first kind of backflip or your first big jump when you were kind of you know eight nine years old. Uh, yeah, I, there's tears, a lot of uh, stress. I think I've never felt my legs shake that much in my entire life. <laughs> and did you land the first jump that you did, or did you did you land on your feet? Um, I was so scared of not like rotating enough and landing on my head that I over rotated it and just landed on my back. Okay. <laughs> So you landed in like some nice deep soft powder did you so it wasn't quite so yeah. bad yeah yeah okay no, it wasn't that bad okay fantastic and um and Leone with some of the injuries that you've had I know obviously but for both of you kind of the mental sort of side of, of competition and, and the danger of the sport that you both do must um must be massive and I know obviously the physical training that you have to put in uh, you know, requires a, a, an unbelievable amount of dedication. But how much does the actual um, kind of, I suppose, mental rehearsal and you know, managing of of anxiety and and mm. and fears and nerves and and all of that stuff? How much of a big part of your sport is that? And do you also get help and with Team GB? You know, do you have kind mm. of um, you know psychologists and sports psychologists and things like that that work that work with you as well? Um, yeah, so, um, well, I think personally that the mental side is um, important, um, even more important than the physical side. Um, and, well, first, because, like, you can be really strong, but if you're at the top of a mogul course and in your head you're doubting yourself, um, it's very tricky to... to to get it right and you don't you kind of really do not want that when you're on the top top of a course so yeah I work with a, a sports psychologist so GB um have that yeah with their in their system so um I've been working with her and and um yeah it's been really interesting but so helpful like I've learned a lot about myself and and yeah coming back to the injury side like without a sports psychologist, I don't think I would be able to, to keep mogul skiing. Uh, you know, it's just one of those sports where you can't doubt yourself and, and you have to be hundred percent. Um, so yeah, coming into, to visualization a lot massively. Um, and just, yeah, knowing what works best for you. Mm. 
Um, it's been really interesting to know that, you know, I can't be left on my own at the top of a course um, because I'm, I'm a massive overthinker. So if I'm, on, if I'm left on my own, I start doubting and, and look, seeing the dangers and, and then I, that's not what I want at the top of the course. Like I want to. Oh, you've muted somehow, Leone. Oh, there you go. You're back. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, you're just saying, yeah, if you're left at the top of the course, you're an overthinker and you'll start kind of thinking and seeing seeing the dangers or overthinking the things, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, I just, I have to, like, chat to my coach or, like, visualise my run um, before I go and stay as calm as possible. Um, but that's not that's not saying that I don't have pressure but it's managing to have good pressure and not the negative one. Um, so yeah, it's been really good to work on that. Um, and yeah, I think it's really important. Hmm. Do you, do you, um, do you do that as well? Kayla, do you have a similar thing to the only, I don't know if you've frozen again, Kayla. Whenever I want to speak to Kayla, she freezes. And then when, and then when she's, when, when you're talking, Leonie, she's fine. Um, now we, okay. we've, we've spoke about this in the past because there was a, there's a YouTube video with a lady called Kelly McConaughey on it. And she talks about um, the, like how stress, like, like you've just said, mm -hmm. you can have good stress and bad stress and, mm -hmm. and, uh, bad stress bad stress will be like the stress that makes you go in on yourself and overthink things and everything and then good stress is is basically the same thing but you you bring it out as excitement or mm. looking forward to the thing so is that kind of how how you were dealing with stuff you you, you take a situation so like an injury or something like that um which obviously would knock your confidence and then you've got to try and think well you know how do you visualize how to come back um, yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think, uh, well, with the sports psychologist I've been working with, um, it's not it's not to put aside uh, when a bad thought comes to your mind. It's not to to kind of block it, and it's to accept it and go through it. Um, and then I don't know. For me personally. When I've been injured, I've obviously had that downtime and feeling really lonely and down and useless. Um, after them first three weeks of where you can't do much to then getting back into the gym, you know, making yourself feel good again. Um, I kind of have like that switch in my in my mind um, where it's just like, oh, come on, you're a you're a competitor. You absolutely love this sport. Like there's no reason for you to. To, to 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 quit now like you've dedicated your whole life to it you can you can still do this and still go for it um and yeah I just think like when I look at my injuries the amount of times I've come back stronger um mentally and physically um it's no like anyone listening they can do it as well like you just need to put your mind into into a good place where you're like, okay, I can absolutely smash this. This injury was only, only to make me stronger. Yep. That's yeah, brilliant. and that's huge, isn't it? Even like you say, from breaking your back, you know, multiple collarbones, mm -hmm. you know, the knee problems you've had, um, and then to keep going back to a sport that is as physically demanding and and mm -hmm. and potentially dangerous, you know, that you that you're mm -hmm. doing um, is huge. Um, Kayla, can I ask you while you're there? Um, do you listen when you go down when you compete and when you're at the Olympics and stuff? Are you listening to music as you actually go down the the mogul field? Yeah, I listen like it helps me calm like my anxiety and calm my nerves and my thoughts. Um, that I just put earphones in and I saw sort of create my own bubble like just listening to my music and like less about everything that's going on around me. So yeah. Because at the start, when you're waiting at the top, you're kind of you're kind of dancing, aren't you? You know, like yeah. when I saw you at the Olympics, <laughs> you've you've kind of they're introducing you on the TV and you're you're on the screen, and you're kind of I thought you must be, you know, you're kind of like just dancing and you look like you know. So I just yeah. wondered if you have the music on all the way down as well. And do you do you have like one song that you always have when you do your run, or do you have a selection of songs or? Is there something that puts you in the right kind of state to be, you know, to, to be to be right on point sort of thing? 
I have got a playlist. It's mainly uh, techno music. So <laughs> very uh, bass beats, I would say. Yeah. And do you no, it's not Elton John. But like, <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's what James was listening to the other day, trying to get into the mood for doing heavy pressing. And he's listening to a bit of your song. Well, that was on in the background, that it didn't help. Yeah. So, so music. Yeah. So, so, and do you kind of, I know, I suppose it's difficult because you, you, the bumps come when the bumps come and the jumps come when the jumps come. But do you almost uh, like choreograph or coordinate with the music as you're going? Or is it just going in your, in your head? It's probably too difficult to do that, I suppose. Um, it's weird because so I, I hear it at the start and as soon as the person like announces three, two, one, go, I don't hear it anymore. And then the whole way down my run, I can't hear music. And then when I get to the finish line, I can hear it again. Oh wow! So it's it's going it's in it's going in your ears the whole time, but you're just kind of zoned out to the music when you're actually yeah. doing the run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I suppose that's a, that's a big point, really, isn't it? Because most people come in get going into a lot of things and and don't really truly engage with them, and then they wonder why they're not getting the most out of them. You can't really do what you're doing at the pace you're doing it without having that that one track mind, that complete focus, that kind of blinding of other stimulus out. Because um, so many people are doing they're multitasking, whether it's the social media and this and then that, and they you know you see people in the gym and they're reading a book while trying to squat or whatever it is, and, and it, it's like it's it's it that doesn't lead to excellence. And I suppose when you're trying to compete at the level you are you, you can't really be just concentrating on other things can you when you're when you've got quite a serious task at hand you've got to be completely there yeah exactly yeah i mean you only had that um experience at the olympics like we sort of sussed uh why she crossed as well when her um qualities won is that she was like the whole set up around it stressed her out it's like quite a lot because like there's so many cameras in the face and then you see the olympic rings everywhere and then you start thinking everyone's watching you at home when well, as you're in the world cup you don't tend to think of those things but i mean there's still cameras in your face but you don't think oh everyone's watching me right now mm. which is a really weird mindset um to sort of accept mm. i suppose the olympics is such a big thing it just it requires mm. so much you know it, it's it's like the big stage isn't it it's like the o2 of the <laughs> of, of the sport world yes. you know you're, you're you're playing in front of a huge of, of a global crowd aren't you but i suppose at the same time you're still just doing your event aren't you and that's got to be the kind of the 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 skill or the I suppose people who 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 go to multiple kind of Olympics and stuff you have to I suppose try and like I suppose with your music you're trying to kind of shut a lot of that external stuff out you know so it is just you going down the run and because you can't be thinking about you know the fact that it's you know going out live on the BBC and there's millions of people mm -hmm. watching and you know because if you do then that's uh you know that's that's piling the pressure on um, even more, isn't it, over and above what you'd normally experience? Um, Leone, do you, do you have music on when you go down as well, or are you in silence? Um, I tried to listen to music when I was skiing, and I, I hated it, so no, that doesn't really work for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though, isn't it? Because some people, yeah. you know, for, for, for Kayla, she she likes having the music there, and for you, you're you you you're better you're better with it without it yeah that's cool so um in terms of where you're at at the moment and you've obviously you've had the olympics and then i know you've done some more competitions since uh the olympics are you at the kind of are you at the are you in the off season now have you finished um kind of competing for this season now uh yeah so we yeah we we normally have um yeah like april off mm -hmm. um the uh me tom and my sister, we did um, we did like our ski instructor courses in in Austria because uh, it's a good uh, good opportunity to go and get that done. So we did that, and now we're just having some time off in May and 
we're going on holiday um, as a family for the first time in seven years. So we're really looking forward to that. Oh, wow. Where, where are you going to? Uh, we're going to um, um, Tuscany in Italy. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Yeah. And then you'll be, will you be, what I was going to ask earlier, actually, when you were talking about how the, the kind of the punishing nature of your, of your event and your sport, is it something that, I mean, is there much sort of longevity in, in the sport? Do you expect to, are you going to try and go to like the next Olympics or um, is it something that people can stay around for, for ages or would you transition from the sort of the event that you do? Is there something that you can transition into that's less kind of physically impactful and things or what's the kind of progression from, from here onwards for the next sort of five years, do you see? Um, so mogul skiing, like, I would say the average is um, it's rare that someone goes over when they once they've got to 30 years old. Um, it's, it's rare to see someone continue mm. um, like between that 27 to 30, most people end up retiring. Mm. Um, well, obviously simple. Uh, it's just such a big impact on your body. Mm. Um, and then I mean, most, I mean, if you go uh, completely, they uh, don't have anything to do with skiing. They would rather just go into something else. Some end up being mogul coaches. Um, there's a few athletes that have gone into free ride. I guess that's just uh, depending on if you want to continue a career in skiing and competing at high level, or if you've, you've kind of done that and you want to move on. I think that's just an individual um choice mm. so but, what's, yeah, free, we, what's free what's free ride leone to explain um so it's uh people that i'm not sure if they have i think they have to hike up sometimes they get helicopter uh to like a mountain top of a mountain and then they have to um so the, at the bottom of the the course sorry they've looked with uh um oh, i don't even i can't remember the name now they just look at a line they want to choose and then they go up to the top and then one by one they have to come down this line so it's all off piece uh, off rocks they jump off rocks and do backflips or 360s um, and then have to be as um, fluid and and then the speed I think counts as well um, and then it's judged I'm not really sure how it's judged but they've got judges and then yeah it's just crazy sport like I mean avalanche risk is is massive and and they're that doesn't that doesn't sound like much more of a safer option. It sounds to me like it's judged on the fact whether you make it down alive or not. If you do, sounds like something from uh, <laughs> Running Man from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. There's gonna be ninjas attacking you and stuff. Yeah, that doesn't sound. I thought it was gonna be like a nice kind of more, a slightly more gentle kind of uh, thing for when you get older. Well, okay. well, you haven't you haven't got the um, the bumps. So I mm. guess you haven't got that constant impact on your spine. You've got a bit more of that uh, going down a line, um, which is, well, I won't say it's easy, but you haven't got that constant impact. Mm. But then I guess you've got that jumping off a cliff impact. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of free riders that, I mean, I don't actually know the average age, but um, I think you can do free riding a bit longer than you can mogul skiing. Mm. Yeah. So what's your, what's your kind of, um, your, your, do you still have goals and things that you want to achieve, uh, Kayla, after, you know, reaching the height that you reached, um, this year, you know, the, at the past Olympics? I mean, do you, is it, is it something where you could think, well, actually, I'm going to go for the, for the next Olympics in four years' time? Is that in your, on your radar or, or is that looking too far ahead? Do you just have to kind of take each year as it comes? I think I'll try and take each year as it comes uh, and see how. But I mean, being at the Olympics and coming eighth, it only was, like gave me the like, like this energy to want more uh, and reach that top six level. I mean, it's only two spots down. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, I. It always gives me like any kind of result, and definitely that result that I did in the Olympics that I wasn't particularly expecting. Um, I was just really wanted to have fun and um, 
enjoying this game because uh, I was struggling for a while to uh, actually have fun while I was skiing. I was just so much in my mind. And, um, and then it's basically what I did. And like being there with me just helped even more uh, having a sister there. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it did give me that uh, strength to say, like, let's go until 2026. Um, but then kind of coming home, I was like, it's actually quite nice, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, yeah, I think, I think I'll try and get there, but take it step by step. Yeah. Do we know where do we know where 2026 is going to be? What, who's hosting? In Italy. Oh, it's in Italy. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Because yeah. I think because you because because was it? I know there's a series of finals, and I think you did you finish eighth, and the top six go through to what was called the super final. Was that right? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was remember watching that. That was fantastic. And um, how about you, Leone? What's your kind of approach? Is yours a kind of see how things go and take it one step at a time? Or have you got your kind of sights on trying to reach, um, you know, 2026 as well? Or, or, or what, where, where, where's your mind at at the moment? Um, well, I've got goals I want to achieve on my, my jumps and my skiing um, that I'd like to get going with for next year. Mm. Um and then, yeah, I think I'm just going to take it yearly um, because it's a bit like Kayla, like one minute I'm like, come on, let's go for another four years. And then another minute I'm like, oh, but my body hurts a bit. <laughs> um, it took quite an impact there. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think the most important thing is, is um, to enjoy it. And as long as I'm enjoying it and having fun, um, then I don't see a reason to to stop and and, and like go into a different career um, and that's hard sometimes to balance when you want to obviously perform really well and you're like I need to stay focused and then at the same time you want to you want to have fun and enjoy it so you kind of need to find that balance of yeah I'm actually I'm really enjoying this and, and I'm performing so let's go. <laughs> I mean, we can't really, probably most people can't understand that from a young age, from like you say, eight, nine, 10, 11, mm. 12, you know, you're competing, uh, you know, in a sport. And then certainly in your, you know, your teens and your late teens and your 20s, you know, you're really rigidly kind of training and competing and, and you must have a very different um, kind of childhood and young adulthood than, than most people. So um, but I suppose it's all you've it's all you've known. So um, it's it, it, yeah, it's, it's it's hard for for normal people, you know, for non elite athletes to comprehend. I suppose. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think it's. Um, I mean, you have to have a lot of de de determination and and commitment to if you want to be a, a high level athlete. Um, it takes a lot um but at the same time I wouldn't change it for anything in the world like I'm really grateful to have um like I'm bilingual uh, I live in like the French Alps it's one of the most blue beautiful places I, I've been to and I've traveled all around the world competing so um just feel really lucky for that um and for the opportunities my parents gave me uh, I mean a lot not a lot of people have them opportunities so I just think like for me and my brother and sister we just want to make the most of it and and kind of say like thank you to our parents for for like helping us on this journey and because without them like we wouldn't be where we are today so yeah I mean I've met both your mum and dad and they're mm -hmm. um they're incredible people aren't they really like you yeah. say to 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 you know just to volunteer well let's you know try and give you this opportunity and 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 go out there and and I met your I met your dad out in Chatel actually one year when I was out there and he took me out for the day and had lunch with me and stuff and it was and we might try and come out again next year with the gym with the gym group you know so if you happen to be out there yeah. when we're out there you might be away competing and stuff but no, that'd be fantastic to uh, to meet you because Chatel is that yeah the whole area there is fantastic mm. isn't it yeah. yeah yeah it's beautiful yeah 
Oh, thanks so much um, for, for coming on, uh, Leona and Kayla. I don't know if you've, I know Kayla, it's been a bit difficult technically because you've been uh, yeah, on this train. No, no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. What are you going to Paris for? Is this just for a leisure trip or is this something, you know, ski related or? Not ski related at all. My boyfriend's from Paris. Uh, <laughs> um, I kind of like getting out of the mountains from time to time. Okay, just a nice a nice time in Paris. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Pete, do you have anything you'd like to uh, kind of say as we as we sort of start to wrap up? Um, yeah, I just like to, what Leonie was saying about the mental side more than the physical side. Not necessarily more, but it's it's just as important. I think that's that that's a really good takeaway from this for anybody. Because you, you were asked the question about, like, James, about um, about overcoming injury, you know, mm. which um, there's a physical aspect to injury, but obviously there's a massive mental aspect as well to do with pain and all of that um, afterwards and whether you're capable afterwards or not. And, and what Leone said about it making us stronger and it was there for a reason rather than thinking it's there to stop you, I think is just fantastic. Um, and then just about, like, getting the mental side of it to take the pressure off as well. Cause a lot of people, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to relate this back to like normal life. Yeah. And a lot of people put pressure on themselves, don't mm -hmm. they? Um, you know, pressure that, that, that these guys deal with in, in different ways as well from the same family, but you deal with it in very different ways. Yeah. Um, Leonie can't be on her own at the top of the slope. She has mm -hmm. to have someone with her and all that. Whereas Michaela's kind of there just with her headphones in like, leave me alone. I'll, <laughs> I'll sort it out. So, that's really interesting. I just think that's really interesting because, you know, in, in everyday life, people put themselves under so much pressure and it's about trying. It's not about like not being under that pressure and not, not looking for it. It's trying to, it's it being able to deal with it, isn't it? And also yeah, relating it back to kettlebells. A lot of people say kettlebells hurt your back. I've said this before, right? Because people say <laughs> kettlebells hurt your back. And I go, yeah, but skiing breaks your legs. And it turns out it doesn't. It breaks your collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, Paul, do you have anything to say as we as we kind of start to wrap up? I do, but conveniently, my next door neighbour started drilling the concrete up in the house, in the in the base. I don't know if you can hear it. Still. No, we can't but, really um, hear it. So if you want to say, oh, something, that's good. Yeah, Zoom yeah. must have its little filter then, which is pretty good. So yeah. I actually put together. No, it a little... just sounds like you've got a bit of a dodgy tummy, to be honest. Well, you know, I do eat a lot of fiber. Um, so uh, no, I put together a nice little handbook for my clients on how to fail, um, and, and some of these things I think would be quite relevant to, because they highlight kind of probably why why our two guests, uh, Leonie and Kayla, have succeeded. Um, you know, the first one is to start tomorrow. If you want to fail, you can start tomorrow. You know, you've got to take action and do things. Um, another one is to, um, is to basically fail once and quit forever. Um, you know, you guys obviously you've broken bones. You've, you've probably lost races, you know, and you didn't quit. You know, you just kept showing up time after time. Um, avoid discomfort is another one um so if you want to fail you can avoid discomfort and as you guys have shown you know it's not always fun but you've kind of got something bigger in your mind that you want to aim for and 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 avoiding that discomfort would just put you in situations where you didn't succeed and i think uh, i don't want to go through all of them the other one is do your best not what it takes because sometimes what you think your best is isn't what it takes and you guys must confront that constantly you know like what it takes to win what it takes to get to the level that you guys are at is is not always your best it's kind of beyond that isn't it it's it's it you have to dig deep and when you guys talk about this this focus you have to bring in the psychology it, it it's because you are having to dig deep it is because you are taking it beyond what most people are comfortable doing and and i think that's what it's probably difficult for a lot of people to understand myself included what it is to actually perform at a very high level is that is that you are operating much differently and you are having to dig deep in a way that most people just don't have to encounter it's very uncomfortable in it but but the payoff can be so huge can't it the payoff can be so fulfilling 
Um, and you suppose you've got to keep that in mind at any point when you're doing these things. That's my thoughts anyway. Good. Yeah, no, we can we can actually hear that drilling now quite loudly. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> now. It's just coming through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much, Leone and Caleb. And I know we, we rescheduled from a few weeks ago, but it's really, really good to actually get to speak to you. And thanks, Kayla, for uh, you know logging on from the, from the train en route to Paris. And and thanks, Leone, for joining us uh, from Châtel in France. Hopefully, uh, next time you're back over um, in England in Chelmsford this way, come in and sit, come in and see us, and and train with us at the gym and yeah. stuff. And uh, and next year when we come out skiing, I'll I'll try and really hook up and. Uh, and meet you guys again but yes thanks so much um uh it's been really interesting been really fascinating and been lovely to speak to to speak to you and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to, like i say we'll share some of the videos from the olympics and from training and from other things that i can find and maybe you can send me some bits uh, that we'll share with people so they can actually because talking about the event and then actually watching it um you know it's going to give them much more of, a, of an idea of of what you do so thank you so much um so thanks again for all of our listeners guys uh please do share like subscribe uh leave a review join the uh the facebook group and uh i'll see you soon uh leone take care thank you for having me brilliant and uh hope you have a lovely time in paris kayla thank you thanks for having <laughs> us okay and uh and until next week see you later goodbye You've been listening to Health Odyssey with Peter Land, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. To get your regular fix of hype-free health, you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favourite podcasts. You can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey.